Hi, my name is Ali Shesova from Breacher Digital and in this video we're going to talk about how adding an RCD clamp to your uh, let's say flyback converter in order to protect the switch may actually make you fail the EMC test. So uh, let us start with a simple flyback. I'm only just going to draw the primary side. You have your transformer there and you've got your switch there and then you've got your ground there. The issue is that because of the leakage inductance of this transformer you get a massive spike on the drain to, uh, of, of this FET and therefore we need to protect it. We can protect it with an RC uh, snubber or with an RCD clamp. Other people use Zener clamps and so on but the ones that we use uh, at least in our workshops is either an RC uh, a snubber or an RCD clamp and in fact we have done videos uh, on how you design these. However, when you add an RCD clamp to your circuit it actually makes the EMI signature quite worse at, especially at higher frequencies in the radiated emissions band. So uh, the way it works is that uh, we add a diode here and then a resistor and then the capacitor and you size the resistor and the capacitor in such a way that this clamp will turn on very fast at the voltage below the breakdown voltage of your MOSFET and therefore protect it. Um, the, so before we add this the drain source voltage may look something like this where that is time and that is the voltage and this spike here can be very very huge and we're going to see that in the lab um, shortly. Now when we design our RCD clamp we make sure that it breaks, it, it turns on at the right time in order to protect the switch and this will be your clamp voltage, weak clamp for example um, and, and you design it so that this spike doesn't happen. Unfortunately the shape will as you will see in a moment is actually got a lot of sharp edges and a lot of the spikes and even faster ring which I haven't shown here you will see that on, a, on the scope shortly and that is going to cause a uh, um, um, lots of EMI noise um, and the way around it uh, is either you also add the RC snubber or you can add a small resistor here thank you to Klaus for suggesting it which will actually make the noise signature much much better. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the lab we're going to measure the noise uh, of this uh, converter with and without the uh, RCD clamp and with and without this resistor. So this is uh, um, our lab setup. Here I've got a flyback, uh, I've got a load, um, I have got um, a listen, I'm powering the flyback uh, um, through the listen so that really I just give myself a known uh, source impedance and I've got here a current clamp and that is going to the spectrum analyzer and I am looking at the drain source voltage uh, with the oscilloscope. Uh, this is a type of setup that we run in some of our workshops in order to study things like this. Uh, so um, at the moment I have, uh, I have not put the RCD clamp in so let's have a look at the oscilloscope and see what we've got. So this is the drain source voltage uh, without any RC snubbing and without an RCD clamp. You can see this massive leakage spike that you've got, it is 130 volts. I can tell you that this uh, power supply has got a 12 volt input voltage and a 7.5 volt output voltage. So you can imagine that this is, is really quite high uh, and you need to protect the switch. So um, I have put a jumper in uh, with which I can take the RCD clamp in and out of circuit. So let me first uh, save this um, um, save this waveform so that we can have a look at it. I'm going to save it. There we go. That waveform is now saved. Um, and now I'm going to put the um, RCD clamp in. That's in and that's out and that's in and that's 
out. So with the RCD clamp in, you can clearly see that the clamp is kicking in at the right voltage in order to protect my, my switch and it does its job very nicely. However, look at this very sharp spark here, this, uh, uh, spike here, another sharp spike. There's almost a 90 degree bend here and you need a lot of high frequency components in order to create such sharp edges and such a cropped uh, 90 degree turn off um, at, this, at this point right there. And we're gonna look at that in, with the spectrum analyzer in a minute. Um, however, bear this way for me in mind. So I'm going to save uh, this now. In fact, let me see if I can make it a little bit wider. And oops, please bear with me. And one more. Uh, let's put this position to zero. Okay, so have a look at all of these sharp edges. Uh, we're going to look at that in frequency domain, domain in a minute. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a tiny resistor, uh, as I suggested uh, in, the, in the presentation earlier on, and we'll see what happens to the waveform. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put a tiny resistor in place. And you can see that uh, at least these huge sharp edge over there has disappeared. This, this, this massive change here has changed and therefore this should be a better compromise in terms of uh, saving your switch and at the same time not having as much of the uh, EMI noise that uh, we would normally get. So that was in time domain. Now we're going to go into frequency domain and have a look at the noise signature in frequency domain. Here is the uh, noise signature of um, our, um, our, our power supply. The uh, snubber, the, the clamp is not in the circuit now. So uh, our waveform looks something like this. And my proposal to you is that actually the noise signature is better with the clamp not being in the circuit. However, we have to protect our, our switch. So if I go back, you will see this. Now let me uh, max hold uh, this and then view it. So this is without the clamp um, and now I'm going to add the clamp in. So let us turn on a, a second trace. We go to clear right and now let me add the clamp in. So now we have a clamp without the little resistor and that is, that is the noise signature. Uh, if I go back you can see now that that is the waveform that you have. Uh, the RCD clamp it is in the circuit, but these sharp edges is going to cause us trouble, especially at uh, um, radiated emissions noise. So uh, and, uh, frequencies. So if I now do max hold again, and then I view it, there we go. You can see clearly that uh, at lower frequencies, the addition of the uh, um, the clamp has helped us. Um, the range for what we're looking at at the moment is from 150 kilohertz to 150 megahertz. And uh, up until about 30 uh, megahertz, whereby we have the uh, um, uh, conducted emission band, it's actually better. However, when we get to radiated, you can clearly see that the noise is actually a lot higher when we have added the RCD clamp. Uh, so now I'm going to go to another trace. We do clear right. And now I'm going to, instead of having an RCD clamp, I'm going to add that extra resistor, as I mentioned earlier on in the video. Okay, so now the time domain looks like this. You can see that we don't have as many sharp edges. And I go back to frequency domain, I do uh, max hold, and then I do view. And you can see now that at lower frequencies, in fact, the addition of that um, little resistor has helped, um, has helped very much. So my noise is quite low at uh, lower frequencies. And also when I get into the radiated band, then also the noise seems to be quite low, not as low as not having uh, the RCD clamp in at all, but certainly much better than having, uh, not having any damping without that little resistor. Um, so um, another thing that you can do in order to help situation is to actually add the RC snubber as well, or at least put the footprint in uh, so that if you need it, you can add.
so this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we have got a, uh, a PDF of this presentation with actually more details uh, in it. Um, and uh, you can download that from the link in the description. And hope to see you in one of our workshops.